Hello, kindergartners and first graders. We have another uh, lesson here. We're going to be doing lessons six and eight today. We'll be skipping seven. Uh, we'll come back to seven uh, when we do lesson nine. Uh, but let's begin by, by asking the Lord for his uh, to open our hearts, our minds. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, you made so many beautiful things in our world. You love us immensely. Help open our minds to see the truth and beauty of creation, the truth and beauty of your saving work, and help us to grow in love. You love us immensely. May we grow in deeper communion with you each day. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now today, we're going to be learning about the church, God's house, the church, and baptism. All right, so we're going to start with this first activity here, page 16. So circle of things you see in church. All right, so we got six, those are six pictures here. Hopefully you can figure, write, figure out which ones you see in church and which ones you don't. All right, so I'll let you do that. We're gonna go, we'll go over that when we go over together. All right, I'm sure you can uh, just circle the ones only that you see in church. You can cross out the ones you aren't gonna see in church. Okay. All right. So as you're as you're doing, let's see here, as you're doing that, a couple of uh, images here to show. Uh, let's see here first. Here's St. Francis, and then here's St. No, that's not St. Joseph. Where does St. Joseph go? There he is. Okay. Here is St. Joseph. Okay, well, I'm able to only do one of these at a time, probably. All right. So that's St. Francis Xavier. And then here's St. Joseph inside the church. Churches are God's house, a place of worship. All right. So we're going to learn a couple of objects that are in here. So first, in both of the churches, there's a tabernacle. All right. So there's a tabernacle right here in the center at St. Joseph's. Circling it right now. I right, see right there. And then there's one in St. Francis. So yellow right here all right that's where we keep the blessed sacrament the eucharist jesus jesus special presence all right in second grade you'll be making your first communion uh, but we learn jesus is specially present in what looks like bread uh, but it's really jesus he turns it into his very body and blood so we can come close to him and he can come close to us so there's the tabernacle is the place where we keep the blessed sacrament the eucharist and then there's also a sanctuary like this candle here that's all that's burnt that burns as a sign uh, that let's see here both a reminder that Jesus is truly present in the tabernacle. All right, we got okay. What are some other things that we see here? Well, in both churches, uh, there's a crucifix. So. Here's, there's the big crucifix here, and here we have a crucifix up here, because it's Jesus on the cross, because it's through Jesus and through his cross that we come to salvation, that we receive Jesus' love most deeply, and we come to deeper communion with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we face the cross, because it's through Jesus. All right, there's also, we have a cross here that's carried in, and also one here at St. Joseph's. All right. There's some other, uh, there's candles. So down here in St. Joseph's, candles here, and also on the back, you can't see them as well. But up here we got, there's candles in the back here at St. Francis. All right, there's even some up here in front. That we see them here. Uh, but the candles, we have them here is because Jesus is our God, Jesus is our King. And so we have candles here, not because I need light, they help me to, to read, read and stuff, but, but it's a sign of honoring Jesus, all right? We light candles for him, 
at Mass because we're honoring him. It's our procession. He's in the front, and we want to follow him. Okay, so now there's some other things we have here in the church, um, in both churches. So there's statues. We have Mary here, St. Francis Xavier, and St. Joseph. And then Joseph is holding baby Jesus, little Jesus. And then here at St. Joseph, we have Mary, and she's holding Jesus. Um, there's some stations of the cross at St. Joseph's. Let's let's make this a little bigger here. There we go. This end. Okay, can't make it much bigger. Um, there's stations of the cross around the border. There's also here at St. Joseph. There's this little dove. All right, that represents the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, we have the altar here. Kind of, it's this conceptual table. Uh, there's the pulpit. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use a different color, orange. The pulpit or ambo where the word, the Bible is read. All right, so there's all these special things. I also have with me here um, all these special, uh, see here. So I have a chalice here. Let's see if I can get this right. I have a chalice where there's wine put in and then a patent that holds the bread the, uh, that changes into Jesus' body and blood at Mass. So these are special uh, vessels. They're only used for Mass, just as the the items here at the churches are only used uh, at church for Mass, uh, for worship, all right? They're special. They're only for that, okay? We got there's some special objects there. Um, all right, if we turn to the next page, we see we can trace the words. So we have the Pope, there's a bishop, and a priest. All right, so these are some of the, those, the men that Jesus calls to help lead his, his church here on earth, his family. So you can write in there, there's the Pope, he lives in Rome, uh, and P, St. Peter was the first Pope. Jesus made him the first pope, and the, there's there's been over 260 popes since the time of Jesus to help guarantee that we receive the real message, the real gospel, uh, and that we can receive all the graces that God wants to give us. A bishop uh, is a successor of the apostle. We see he has this crook here, like kind of like a shepherd. He's the shepherd of a diocese, which is a region, all right, so uh, of many smaller parishes. And then a, a priest here, he's like myself, uh, in charge of a parish, a church building, you know, on a smaller group. So they're kind of, it's from smaller to largest to the entire world. And um, But Jesus, he's ultimately in charge of his church. He's the, These are just his earthly instruments, representatives, uh, that he works through me, he works through bishops. He works through the Pope. Now, a helpful image uh, for, the, for the church is the church is really, it's God's family. All right. It's, I think it's a building, but we have church buildings, maybe like your home with your family, your family, you have a home, you know, but if let's say something happened to your house, you would still have a home if you have your family, right? So the church building is where we worship, but more importantly, it's the the individuals, the people there. And so I have a picture of my family. One of my sisters getting married here. Um, Jesus, when he was on earth, he had a family. All right, there's Mary and Joseph. He was born into a family. And then God's family, the church, uh, you have Pope Francis, all the angels and saints in heaven, they're part of God's family. You and me here on earth, and there's even certain men and women that dedicate their entire lives to serving God like these sisters. But it's uh, really God made us for communion, to be loved. He wants to bring us more deeply into his family. So that's really what the church is. It's God's family. It's not primarily a building. That's where our, the family gathers uh, to strengthen relationships uh, in the family, relationship with God and with others. Uh, in God's family, but the fam it's more importantly, it's the people, the, the persons in uh, God's family, the saints, the angels, you and me, uh, 
in the Lord. And the church is God's family. All right, chain, turn to page 18. Where we got some circling here to do. So let's count these candles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. All right, y'all let you count the other ones. We'll on Wednesday we'll see what, uh, what you guys come up with. All right. This is when we meet. And then here is a little cutout you can do. You can build a church, cut out those, and see here either and use the use glue and, and glue them on. So or even put the doors in where the doors go, the bell and the bell tower, the windows. We're kind of building God's church. Now, one one thing of God's church, uh, in with God's house, uh, is also we we hear from the scriptures, the Bible. So this is one of my Bibles that I've used a lot, and the Bible is God's holy writings that God inspired. God's inspired uh, men under the guidance of the Holy Spirit to write uh, these, and it's really God's message to us. And all of these different smaller books, the the Bible is really a collection of books, and there's really two main sections of the Bible. There's the Old Testament and the New Testament. So the Old Testament is this whole first part. It's most of the Bible. It's about this much of the Bible. If you see, I got the, the Bible here. This is the Old Testament, all right, where God creates the world, heavens and the earth. Uh, and then after Adam and Eve sin, uh, and God needs to bring it on his rescue mission, he prepares the way for a savior. He forms Israel as a nation uh, and prepares the way for the coming of, of Jesus. And then the New Testament is when Jesus comes and establishes his church. All right, so the Old Testament, uh, really some of the old promises, and then the New Testament refers to the new promises in Jesus, all right, where he fulfills what he told in the Old in even a better way than could have been imagined. So the Old and New Testament are in the Bible. So we'll be going through the Bible as you go through religious ed. Uh, we're going through different uh, parts of the Bible, very important parts. So just to give you an overview, the, the Bible is a very important book because it's God's words to you and me. All right. So that, that's chapter, lesson six, uh, that God's house on earth is the church, is a, the church, and God's, God's church is, you know, there's the building, is his house, kind of, but more importantly, God's church is, is a family. It's you and me are gathered around our Lord, worshiping him with our lives, with our lips. All right, now... Let's turn to chapter lesson eight. All right. So here we are, lesson eight, God's family baptisms. You can color this picture, and I'm going to speak a little bit about baptism as you go about coloring. You see the there's the priest here, the parents, and they're having their child baptized in the baptismal font. The water will be blessed, uh, and that child will become a member of God's family. Wonderful. Now, grace is God's gift of life that he shares with us that we receive in baptism. That the priest will pour the water over the child's head and then say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that child becomes, at that moment, part of God's family, is filled with a share in God's life. Now, you and I, we have you know, blood, we have bloodstreams all throughout us. Uh, we can't, we don't feel them, but we, we need them, all right, to be alive. Uh, life of grace is like another special bloodstream of life where now we can grow in faith, grow in friendship with our Lord, uh, and come to know him and love him more deeply. I'm trying to find my picture. Okay, so I have a picture of my baptism here. So there's my baptism. All right. The priest pouring the water, my mother holding me. 
But in baptism, that's when we become part of God's family. So to thank your parents for baptism, that they they said yes to you by 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 giving you life, and then they brought you to be baptized so you could receive divine life. It's amazing. God wants us to be part of his family. You get two families. You get an earthly family and a heavenly family. Uh, and you can be part of both families at the same time. Uh, and all the great gifts that God wants to bestow upon you and me. Now, baptism, it gives us grace. It makes us part of God's family. And it also takes away original sin. So we'll be learning about that next week, the next lesson. Uh, but original sin, but really that's the kind of, um, it's really we're clothed with grace. Our original sin is the lack of something we would have if Adam and Eve hadn't sinned. All right, so it's a, it's a complicated term. I remember doing a baptism and saying, we're, you know, this child is going to be baptized, they're going to be received in God's family, their sins are going to be washed away, and a little girl raised her hand and said, she's a baby, she can't sin. Uh, right, that child can't sin, all right? But we'll be learning about a special type of sin you and I inherit uh, because we're descendants of Adam. Uh, and baptism helps to cleanse us, really to clothe us with grace, make us part of God's family. So I hope you if you don't have your, your picture here done coloring and stuff. You can continue to work on that, maybe even pause the video. We're going to move to the next page. We have a connect the dots, and there's a dove, all right? Here is a dove, and the dove is a sign of the Holy Spirit. So here's the, um, we'll call it connect the dots, so connect the dots, and doves are, it's a sign of the Holy Spirit, and when Jesus was baptized, there was a dove over him, representing the Holy Spirit coming down upon him. And when you were baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon you and God the Father said to you, you are my beloved son. With you, I take delight. I am well pleased. I love you. That God loves you. You didn't have to do anything. You just have to receive his love. Let him love you. And you know, babies love that. Babies, babies love just to be looked at. You know, and that's what God wants us to have toward him. Just to love, to let us receive his gaze of love and be at peace there. Just to receive his love and rest in his gaze of love. And the Holy Spirit comes to us first in baptism. Now later on in confirmation, you receive a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But in baptism, you and I, the Holy Spirit begins to dwell in us. Uh, in a very special way where we're able to have friendship with God. Uh, and so there's the dove. I think that's that completes this chapter. Is there any other things? Let's see here. Baptism. Yeah, so baptism is really that important. Jesus... Uh, gave us baptisms so that we could be called into his family. And it's beautiful that, you know, I was baptized as a little baby, uh, and probably you were too. Uh, and what's up? That's the wrong picture. I said, here it is. And just as we receive life from our parents, and we didn't do anything, it's not like we earned it or worked for it, but we just receive it. Uh, and then we're clothed, we're fed. God does the same. He gives us a share in his life. He brings us into his family. And then he nourishes us with his grace, his word in the scriptures and the sacraments. Uh, so God is so good. He gives us so many good gifts. And he sends the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. He wants to be that close to us. He doesn't just want to be next to us. He wants to live in us so that we, so our hearts can be on fire with his love, and we can love as he loves. Let's close with a um, prayer to the Holy Spirit. In the, name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit, you came to dwell in our hearts beginning in baptism. Thank you for coming to dwell in our hearts. 
We ask that you inflame our hearts with your divine love. Inspire us to always do good. Help us to love you, you above all, Lord, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. May we ever grow in deeper communion with you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.